Okay, so um, Eileen helped me win the debate because, I mean, she clearly showed by spending three minutes on the actual standard and what she was supposed to be for, and then spending four minutes on, because uh, I timed her, on, on what I'm for, um, she clearly prefers it as well. So we'll start out with uh, my relevant disclosures again. Nestle, it's not relevant, but I'm proud. Um, even though I'm not so proud because they do tend to um, do some really bad things with their nutritional product, lack of nutritional product. Um, <clears throat> So the SPAC-4, let's go over the SPAC-4. This is a, a very interesting um, group of people um, in the way they present things. So the trial was designed to detect a hazard ratio of 0.74 between the gemcitabine and gemcitabine plus capecitabine groups. Um, you'll note that they didn't achieve a hazard ratio of 0.74, but that's okay because you get more power um, in the post hoc analysis than you plan for usually. Mm -hmm. um, they estimated the 480 events could be obtained by rolling 722 patients, and they, sample size, they inflated their sample size to account for patient withdrawals, which is a good idea, and patients are lost to follow-up, which is also a good idea because this happens. Their study design, because, you know, Eileen told me I had to rip up um, Jim Cape trial, was, uh, as I mentioned, uh, they were had interim analyses at 100, 200, 300, and 400 events. Which interim analysis was the 458 event analysis? Um, it makes you a little concerned about how they were watching the data. I was just going to say that because I don't know for sure, um, but I am going to point out this thing. The Independent Data and Safety Monitoring Committee recommended early publication placed, based on a clear signal of efficacy. F, and immediately 458, maybe 58 more events happened after they, after they did their analysis before they reported. So it's quite possible this is exactly what they planned. Um, they kind of, in their, in their paper, obfuscate the numbers a little bit by talking about the pa number of patients who had relapsed or died, but as you know, the events they want are the 458, the deaths, not the um, relapse or die, because death is the primary endpoint, or survival is the primary endpoint in the study. And this, of course, is, is, the, um, is the data, um, which does show Gem Cape favored, um, but as you'll note, as, as in all trials, as you get further down the line, your Kaplan-Meier curve, which is a curve based on what you're guessing is going to happen, is based on very few patients towards the end of the uh, trial because it's still an early analysis. Um, and I think that that's very important. So Jim Side being conclusion, uh, Cape Side being conclusion, uh, these aren't, in my mind, the final results. I think they need to get to the final results because of what I'm going to show you in a moment. If the final results are still positive, then this is an improvement. And, and, and I will admit currently, um, I have used Gem Cape. If the final results are not positive, will it be published in a timely manner? I'm curious about that. We have to be cautious, um, not accepting all results on face value. You do have to dissect the data, and I do think we need to dissect the data. And, and some, some things matter, and some of it is track record. So let me show you the Gem Cape randomized trial upon which this was built. This was the metastatic disease setting. And for those of us who remember this presentation in ECHO 2005, um, Gem Cape was statistically significantly positive, and we never saw the final data for five, I should say never, we didn't see the data for five more years or more, actually. Uh, study, again, this study was uh, powered for a certain finding. Hazard ratio was a, second, a secondary endpoint. They were actually looking at the one year overall uh, survival as their um, primary endpoint. Um, they don't mention that much in the papers. They kind of avoid that. Just, you know, just ignore the fact that we get a little bit of obfuscation from this group. And metastatic, because I actually do respect these colleagues, but I, impu I impugn their reputations regularly. In metastatic disease, uh, gemcitabine plus capecitabine went from positive statistically to negative, not significant, which they published, again, about five years later. Now, admittedly, some of it was because some of us initially rejected the article. Um, to answer the negative trial, the authors spoke about how negative gemerlotinib was with a hazard ratio of 0.81 and how positive their gem cape was with a hazard ratio of 0.86. Um, this, you know, it's how you present your data that matters, not what your actual data is apparently because they claim that gem cape should be a standard of care when they didn't have a randomized trial that was positive. Um, I'm just pointing this out not because I believe Gem Cape isn't, isn't a reasonable potential regimen in adjuvant setting, but because this group has had a history of presenting early data that later turned negative, but we saw it a lot later. Um, so thus far we have uh, three mediocre options for adjuvant therapy of pancreas cancer, Gem, 
five of you and Jem Cape, and you can argue that Jem Cape is better than the others. But of course, um, as Axel and, uh, and Dr. Ilson there uh, sit late at night planning these meetings out going, let's give Jordan a, a, a topic that has zero data whatsoever to debate, and then snickering for a while um, and toasting how they're going to abuse me later. Two regiments significantly uh, improved on Jem alone in the medicine. Daniel goes, hmm. <laughs> <Yeah. Hey. laughs> you can just see it. Two regiments significantly improved on Jem alone in the metastatic disease. And Eileen conveniently showed that to you. Um, our goal here in adjuvant therapy is to eliminate microscopic residual disease. Response rate is the key determinant for that. Okay, and, and once again, it's systemic recurrence that kills most of the patients. So if you take the SPAC-4 data, there's a slight increased response rate to 19% without a survival advantage in metastatic disease. Um, and that supposedly yielded a survival advantage in adjuvant therapy. Well, what about gem napa Taxel, or Fulfillinox? They have higher response rates, about 30% and have improvements in overall survival. So one would think if you're going to extrapolate it, truth is that these should be much more effective than Gem Cape. Um, like Eileen pointed out, in all the studies that are being evaluated with novel multi-drug regimens, none of them actually compared to Gem Cape, which makes sense because it hadn't been the standard of care when they were designed. Um, there's a very high likelihood of success for these regimens. Do I know they'll be successful? Of course not. Do I suspect they'll be successful? I actually do believe that there's a high chance that they will be successful. It's chemotherapy, and chemotherapy kills uh, cancer cells, and more effective chemotherapy kills more cancer cells. It's not, uh, it's not a huge leap. Um, as for toxicity, which is a trade-off, truth is that the French trial includes uh, a modified fulfirinox without the um, bolus 5-FU, which adds a lot to the toxicity, and I find pretty tolerable um, all things considered, because I'm not getting the side effects, as you might notice. I feel great when I'm getting Fulfirinox. Um, it's a tough regimen, um, but it's a, it's a regimen that patients can survive, and using the modified form does abrogate some of the toxicity. We've not investigated any modified forms of Gem plus Naplaclitaxel. We don't know much about them. And toxicity is largely reversible, with the exception of, of course, the neuropathy and, and more in the Fulfirinox than in Gem Naplaclitaxel. But um, one can be cautious about the um, neuropathy and stop the uh, oxaloplatin at a reasonable time point. So, and then my slides disappeared. I thought I had one more slide. Well, I give up. My uh, conclusion slide I must have forgotten to put in. Bottom line is that I think that gem and fulfirinox are more effective regimens in the, system, in the systemic med stage four disease. Again, as I pointed out in the first debate, 90% of patients who have resected disease, in truth, have systemic disease at the time of resection. So we're dealing with the same patients. It's unlikely that gem napacotaxel or fulfirinox will not win in a randomized trial. Do I believe one better than the other? I'm not sure if one's better than the other. I do admit to my bias at home off the clinical trial of using Fulfirinox more as first-line therapy and metastatic disease, so I do believe it may be a slightly more effective regimen. But again, the response rates are pretty much identical if you compare across trials. So I, I would not say that there's any difference. So my conclusion is that um, I'm right. Eileen's wrong. <laughs> um, it's a very simple conclusion. You can go with it. And uh, that's it. Thank you.